Okay, let's go. This is Jeffrey Fox. We're doing a Big Data Applications Analytics Unit 9 Cloud Computing Technology. Part of the technology side of this course, which is mainly applications, of course. Here, in this uh, initial lesson of the uh, first uh, unit on cloud computing, there are four units in this um, section, which covers, covers parallel computing and clouds. First uh, unit is on parallel computing. Uh, maybe you've already finished that, and this unit is the first on cloud computing. And not surprisingly, is the introduction to cloud computing. Some of which we've already done in the uh, beginning of the class, in the introductions of the class. So, we can't forget our motto, uh, which underlies big data and mainly we're using clouds, and that's of course what we're discussing, so that sounds good. But we're going to be running data analytics on those clouds. We're always going to try to work together. We're going to process big data from lots of different fields. And we're going to do X informatics or X analytics. Or EX, e science, science informatics, sports analytics, but dot, dot, dot. Here are the values of X defined in the, uh, um, on the web. And they span industry and science. And of course, all of this is part of the data science education that we're trying to give you. All right, here's our classic collection of the X informatics pictures. Uh, we recently added uh, one for sports, sports analytics, because we couldn't find sports informatics. But then we generalized this page to collect analytics um, fields uh, as well as informatics fields. We'll maybe find some more when we, with that particular enhancement. Still, you've seen this a lot before, and it's just uh, keeping the big picture in front of you. All right, here's a lot of words. It's the summary of this section. And uh, we have one unit here on parallel computing, and three units here on clouds. And this is the first unit of cloud computing. So this is the summary of the section. This is the summary of the three um, units in cloud computing. And um, we will go through this summary now because it's um, this is the introduction to cloud computing technology. So we ought to go through what we're going to do. We start off defining cyber infrastructure. And E more or less anything, well, that's the concept of X more or less anything, or more or less anything informatics. And uh, we introduce the basics of cloud computing, virtualization as a service. And we look, give you lots of definitions from the web of cloud computing. Um, now, the, this used to be very uh, controversial. It probably is still controversial, but we, it's been studied so much that maybe it's so, so interesting. We do some work on Gartner's famous technology landscape, which we saw in the motivation. There's hype cycles and priority matrices, and we cover cloud and big data. We give a couple of examples from Google and Microsoft of the value of clouds for enterprise applications. Then we uh, review. Um, the different views as to the nature of cloud computing. Uh, this is a discussion of infrastructure as a service, and we follow by discussion of platform as a service and software as a service. And uh, we discuss features in grid and cloud computing and uh, data. We discuss the Amazing Apache Big Data Stack, when, which we're enjoying with HPC, has almost 300 software packages. Actually, there's more than 300. We've only wrote down almost 300. There are divided into 21 layers, which we discuss. Um, we do. Uh, we look at cloud uh, data center architectures, green computing, and software models, and the uh, discussion from Gartner of uh, which which sort of critiques Amazon. And um, Azure, Google, and actually that critique covers lots of others of the cloud industry um, providers or the different providers of cloud resources. And then we look at applications on clouds, including data intensive problems, comparison with high performance computing, science clouds, and of course, the Internet of Things, which there's a whole separate discussion of. Remember, 2015 is the year of the Internet of Things. We then have remarks on security, fault tolerance, and synchronicity. And um, we describe how our users and the data interact with the cloud system. 
Uh, we look at uh, big data processing from an application perspective with lots of commercial examples, including eBay. And we discuss uh, data system architecture. So that's the whole three units. Here we just have unit one. Sorry. Well, it's the first unit for cloud computing. It's uh, unit uh, two of, the, of this particular section. So this particular unit is actually quite short. It looks at cyber infrastructure, uh, or um, which is an NSF term, National Science Foundation term, E more or less anything, and and uh, and also the basis of cloud computing and the virtualization as a service uh, components. And we look at different definitions of cloud computing. We then go on to Gartner's uh, famous technology landscape, which we've seen already in the motivation section for this uh, class, which we have high on the introduction to this class, which has hype cycles and priority matrices, and exists for lots of different areas, including not only general technology, but clouds and big data specifically. Um, this unit concludes with uh, the two examples from Microsoft and um, Google of the value of clouds for enterprise applications. And uh, Gartner also has specific predictions for cloud computing growth areas. So that's this unit of general introduction of cloud computing. Okay, here we come on to uh, the first lesson, which is what we're actually in the first lesson. You know, we have a pretty complex hierarchy here. <coughs> Course, section, unit, lesson. Uh, finally got back to the lesson, wow, that's a long way down. All right, and we're discussing cyber infrastructure as applied to E more or less anything, which is uh, actually uh, sort of our motto for us. For corresponding to our motto, cyber infrastructure is by definition clouds. Um, because clouds are what are used for big data applications analytics. And we define it and we look at its role in, in uh, solving the electronic implementation, namely the informatics of any application or the analytics of any application or the com what it takes to put E in front of an application. So we do E more or less anything or more or less anything informatics. And this sort of generalizes a discussion which is well known for e-business and e-science. Wow, actually it turns out for this lesson, most of it's uh, this uh, introductory uh, har har complex hierarchical introduction. And we finally have a couple of slides, this is the first of them. So this lesson only has two real slides, this is the first real slide. What is cyber infrastructure? Cyber infrastructure comes from NSS. NSF, National Science Foundation, and it's the infrastructure that supports distributed research and learning, which can be thought of as e-science, more generally e-research, that we include um, engineering and e-education. And it links data, and it links and includes data, people, computers. It uses internet technology, web 2.0 and clouds, and it adds grids which allows you to have management, security, and supercomputers all linked together with networks across the world. We have uh, lots of um, interesting aspects, parallel computing, we discussed that in the previous unit. Distributed computing, which has much higher latency, milliseconds, parallel computing, a small number of microseconds is the basic latency between nodes. And clouds have a somewhat higher uh, latency not as high, sorry, but higher than parallel computing, and somewhat less than distributed computing. Parallel uh, computing is needed to get high performance on individual large simulations, where you chop up or large jobs, where you chop out a job into parts. <coughs> By decomposing the problem, we showed how you could decompose lots of problems, and how nature does decomposition and society does decomposition. And then the distributed aspect of cyber infrastructure integrates already distinct components, like a database here and an analytics there, and a supercomputer here. And it's particularly natural for data, uh, because data itself is intrinsically gathered and stored in a distributed place. Because people don't pop their data and store it in the center of the earth. It's a long way down there. And um, 
also who, who we don't know who owns it and we like to keep it next to each other. So we tend to have distributed data. We don't mind often people looking at it and using it, but we want to control it. Let's control it. Wow, e more or less anything. So here we have a famous quote from John Taylor, who was originally at HP and became Director General of Research Councils. The head of effectively, uh, probably effectively um, more than NSF, because he would have the equivalent of NIH probably under him in, in UK. At the time, this was uh, maybe 14 years ago. He defines e-science as global collaboration. Remember I wrote collaboration in our rallying cry for this uh, course. Key areas of science and the next generation. Well, this was remember it was uh, 2000. He was coming up with this, so it was pretty innovative. That will enable it. So, e-science, science informatics is developing tools and technologies that allow scientists to do science. And as science has so much informatics and electronic aspects to it, because you have to do the simulations and analyze the data and store the data and give people access to the data, that's all informatics. And I say there's a corresponding, well, actually to the most people, more common e business. Whenever they access Amazon or, or Netflix, they're doing e commerce of various sorts. And of course, there are lots of other, uh, I shouldn't say, I just gave you the, some of the bigger companies, Amazon and Netflix. And e business is effectively making electronic. What used to be done in shopping malls, what well, still is done in shopping malls, although some of them are looking a bit ropey. And there's a concept of the virtual organization, uh, which is actually a real organization, just uh, implemented using uh, electronically, uh, as opposed to a real organization implemented with a big building with people uh, popping up and down uh, from office to office to talk to each other. Instead, you do it all virtually, and if this links in for e-business employees, customers and stakeholders, mal owners, uh, uh, the people who build the products across the world. And we can obviously define e more or less anything, or more or less anything informatics. This is uh, X, more or less anything is equivalent to X in the, in the um, X here we have here, our nice X from X informatics. And we have e-digital library, e-social science, e-lifestyle. That's uh, Facebook and things, and e-education, that's MOOCs, which is sort of what this is. And there's lots of data, and it's, um, it's inevitable that the data will continue to increase. It's whatever it is, uh, six zettabytes today. And it's growing something like, um, I don't know, 50% every, every 18 months, uh, roughly Moore's Law. Uh, anyway, people. Living in virtual organization, computers, data, sensors, Internet of Things, instruments, which are Internet of Big Things, and they've got to be linked by hardware and software networks. And that's all e more or less anything. It's what's enabled by cyber infrastructure, it's what's supported by clouds, and it's what this uh, um, next three units are all about. So, that's it. Thank you.